So, good day everyone. We're here for another episode of the DVD show. So, for today, we have one of the best shooters here in the Philippines. And he's also currently playing for the NLEX Road Warriors in the PBA. And uh, you guys also might have heard him behind the mic uh, being an analyst for the UAAP, especially the UAAP finals, the game three when UP beat Ateneo. So, yeah, we'll now welcome here to the DVD show. Larry Fonasher, thank you for joining me here in my podcast. Oh, thank you, Diego. It's a privilege and an honor to uh, be part of this. Yeah, to to start things off, I wanted to ask, like, what have what have what have you been doing these past weeks? Like, there's no UAP basketball anymore, and yeah, the the season's gonna start on Sunday since we're recording this on a Wednesday before the U, the PBA opening. So, how's life been like for you? Well. As you said, it's preparation for the PBA and preparing for elite competition as a 40-year-old. That's a challenge that's uh, been really difficult. I'm still trying to to survive basically every practice. And mm-hmm. it's kind of like a day-to-day thing for me, uh, trying to, to, to balance many things. Um, Obviously, it's difficult, yeah. Um, playing when you were 20, 30, and now 40. Uh, mm. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's a day to day thing thing for me. It's a real challenge, but um, you know, I'm just enjoying every every day that I'm still allowed to play basketball. Yeah, how's practice been like with these young guns? Like, does Coach Yang like still make you run a lot of uh, run a lot of conditioning drills or? Do you, do you still uh, play the same amount of like minutes in the court during practice with them, or is it different? Well, it's very strategic now. Obviously, I'm coming to the season not, you know, expecting the same probably 25 to 35 minutes that I was used to before. Yeah. Uh, so I've embraced that role. Um, going to this season, I've enjoyed, you know, really seeing the game in a different way and just really teaching these kids. In in the conversations, basically, I'm having so much fun just talking to my teammates, getting to know them, and just really trying to impart to them what I what I know. And yeah, I guess it comes with the age that you you embrace the limitations that you have already playing. So you try to contribute in different ways. Um, so there. Yeah. So with yeah with Coach Yang's style, you're still gonna be a. Uh, integral part of it as a floor spacer, like a three, uh, terrific three-point shooter. So even yeah, you, you mentioned that the leadership aspect, like you mga bata, like how do you uh, see them, like uh, re- receiving like the information you give them or the lessons that you give them, like are they very open with it? And what are like the main uh, points of uh, points of points that you share to them that you know would hone their game like physically and mentally as well. Uh, my the kids the the younger teammates I have are really prepared uh, to to receive whatever instruction with all the knowledge they have with all the, uh, the advanced training and you know the nutrition they they put in their bodies it's so easy to to talk to them about um, what's new and what's effective in basketball these days I mean it's so easy to splice videos from the NBA and from the previous conference in the PBA and just share it with them and they'll 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 get it right away so it's um uh, it's a great interaction that i have with them every day and it just helps the team the increases the basketball iq and it also helps coach yang um you know uh, improve his system because his players have uh level 2 and level 3 knowledge of um of how to execute his system so um, yeah, that's another fulfilling part of uh, my practices these days. Yeah, and then that's a great way for you to uh, talk to the, with the, with these players, and you're very open to uh, sharing your knowledge. Na you talk to them a ton, but for you, how would you say na you develop yeah, those leadership traits or characteristics that you're more open to sharing it with them? Like, was that through the gradual process of your playing career, or do you think it was already in you, like? When you even when you were like younger, that you had those uh, initiative to become a leader for your teammates. No, I was very reluctant as a leader. Uh, I shied away from it. I'd rather, I was just um, a player who wanted to focus on the game. Didn't really know how to talk and communicate. Um, 
you ask my teammates before and my coaches before in high school and college, I wasn't really uh, a fun teammate to be with because they really couldn't understand how I would communicate. And it was um, a painful process also. I mean, when I went to college, there were um, some great teammates who cared enough to, to teach me, to, um, to mentor me, like Marco Benitez, and Paul Tanchi, Enrico Villanueva. Coach oh, yeah. Sandy, until this mm -hmm. day, is a great friend and a mentor to me. Um, so I realized also that um, you know, whatever I know today uh, was because of people who cared for me, who uh, shared their time uh, to, to help me grow. And so it humbled me also in a way that you know, the knowledge is not just for me and it will really help other people to also be a bridge for me to, to, to connect to them and to know them better as, as people. And, you know, for me, there's more to life than basketball. It can also be an avenue to um, talk to them about um, more important things than uh, basketball, life experiences. Yeah, that's great to hear from you. And talagang lalo na ngayon yung mga uh, nangyayari sa mundo and sa Pilipinas. Like, there's a lot. So these some of these players may not be as aware or, like, as knowledgeable, but yeah, if you're able to help them with their problems and their questions and certain issues outside the court, that's really great for you as one of the veterans on the squad. But yung part din ba na yun, kasama rin ba yun on why you were motivated or like inspired to return to the court? Because the fans know that you haven't been playing since the pandemic began here in the country. and But then now you're coming back with like the, what, the 47th season na yata. Was that also part of it that you wanted to impart the knowledge to these guys? I was actually playing sa 3x3. Um, that wasn't planned. Mm -hmm. um, I just could not come back to the 515 because you could not jump from the 3x3 to the 515 uh, while the season was ongoing. So I had to stay in the 3x3, which was a great experience because I got into shape um, oh. really fast. And um, you know, I got to play. I got to mm -hmm. play more. So that was good for me. And then, siguro, during the pandemic, lang, there was a time that uh, my contract expired for three months already. And mm. I didn't know if I was going to go back to the team because yun nga, um, my family was high risk then. I was weighing if I would go out, I would do the daily grind of being exposed and having the risk of, of um, bringing the virus back to my family. So for three months, siguro na, uh, I didn't have a career and I, wasn't, I couldn't provide for my family. I guess... Um, and Lex being kind enough to take me back and just uh, give me another chance to play. I think more than imparting my knowledge to my teammates, just the gratefulness of them uh, bringing, bringing me back to the team. That was such a huge motivation for me. And um, I, it helped me go to practice again with uh, just gratefulness and thankfulness uh, to them uh, for, mm. for, you know, for saving me during the pandemic. Yeah, that's great from their organization that they really value their players and pinapakita nila na importante sila sa importante kayo sa kanila eh. So that's really um really great that you're back here on the hard floor. But then you mentioned nga the 3x3 stint and well, I haven't ev ever played like 3x3 games, but then like yung formal ones. But then people say na it's more tiring because like there are a few timeouts, but then you're only four on the court. And more often than not, like, tuloy -tuloy talaga yung game or race to 21 yung score. So for you, at like that age, was it really difficult at first to adjust at that pace? Or do you, did you take it like as a challenge to, you know, mahapagbakbakan with these young players that are trying to make a name for themselves as well? Um, it, it was really difficult because obviously I was the oldest um, player there. And I was chasing all these strong young kids. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, apat lang, anim lang kayo sa court and it's half court and hindi ka talaga pwede magtago, magugulpi ka talaga. Yeah, and, for you sure. know, for me, it wasn't that, um, mas madali yun kung siguro early 30s ako because I, I, I would know how to, to prepare for it, how to train for it. Pero the fact is, ang hirap na mag-recover talaga at my age. Kakayanin mm -hmm. ko yung isang in Saturday pero yung next day, ang hirap na mag-recover. That was a real challenge. So, um, eh, yun lang. But I, I was glad lang na, ano, na you know, I 
Um, I competed the, the best of my abilities, being the oldest person there with all the limitations. Uh, it was really a great experience, though. Um, but it's not for you got to really prepare mentally and physically for it. And, and like, if you watch it, and dami rin talaga kasi na injure nung ano, no, yeah. nung first conference. So, it's no joke. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Pero for you, as a basketball player, nasa na sa 5 on 5 ever since college, high school, lahat at since grade school, 5 on 5 ka na sa Ateneo. Like, nung nag 3x3 ka, like, what, what part of you, maybe um, in and out of the court, do you think you honed yourself in? Like, did you become more of a defensive player? Kasi nga, you can't hide. You said on both ends of the floor. Or bawal ka maging yeah, liability? Or was it also like maybe outside the court na yung teammates mo mas naging ka-close mo? Dahil apat lang kayo. So you have no choice to be with these guys. Yeah, I think yung, yun nga, the closeness of apat lang kayo tapos yung coach mo and yung, yung PT and yung utility guy na You know, it's uh, it's a different experience na sa 5 on 5 na mas marami. Ito talaga, you can get to know them better. You can plan your strategies together na even if hindi discarte ng coach, you can, you among yourselves uh, during the game can, um, you know, devise and, and strategize differently. Um, mm-hmm. For me, siguro, uh, I just remembered how to play basketball again. Sa pandemic <laughs> na, you know, two years yeah. hindi ka naglaro. And you have the freedom pretty much to do whatever you want there. Na hindi ka sinisigawa ni Coach Yeng. And hindi kayo sa sub basta-basta pag nagkamali ka. Basically, the freedom again of, you know, playing for innocence again. Na, you know, the last time I played 3x3 was in high school. And yun nga, here, um, just being given the freedom to to experiment on moves. Even take some bad shots and yung mga alanganin na tira na hindi mo naman magagawa sa 5 on 5 So, yun lang. It was really fun lang. The, the freedom it, it gave you. Yeah, but then moving on to now, you're in the 5-on-5 uh, five five team. And your team, even without Kiefer, without Jericho Cruz, without you, you guys made the semifinals and lost to Hinebra in the previous conference in the Governor's Cup. So, I'm pretty sure that you watched their games and you saw the uh, evolution of some of these players. And Oh yeah, two, I forgot to mention that uh, Calvin Oftana and Sila Tony Semrad, like they missed um, many games in the conference. Na yun. So, what makes you uh, positive and optimistic on the future of this team? Lalo nang madami rin namang mga bata na, you know, may upside talaga sa NLEX. Well, uh, having umabot na ng semis, no? And yeah. I've been here for for five years na rin. And Coach Heng has done a great job on keeping uh, pretty much the, the team intact uh, with Um, marami doon sa team na when I got traded to to NLEX noong 2017, nandiyan na rin eh. So that's mm-hmm. five years na pinuhunan ni, ni coach and kami-kami magkakasama. We've built good relationships on and off the court and you know, when you look at our lineup, eh, kita mo naman compared to other teams, dehado, medyo dehado naman talaga kami compared to, to the top tier teams. But we're able to compete. Um, and you know, reach the semis uh, with our with our lineup, and it just shows na kung bakak na tuto narin yung mga bago, mga mm. nag nagpunga narin yung mga invest namin uh, sa isat isa nung 2017. Ang layo na ng improvement na sila Philip, panyamogan, sila Ken Igalo, um, yeah. sila Mike Miranda, and sila Raul Soyud. I mean, it's just amazing lang to see how um, the the how their understanding of the game and their their confidence ha- has increased in, in those five years. And yun nga, that's really the, the imprint of Coach Yang in his team. Na chachagain ka talaga niya and he will give you confidence and you will never be the same. You will be a better player talaga after, um, after going through um, those times uh, with him. Yeah. That's really great that you mentioned the continuity of a team and you would really... Uh, develop some chemistry and also some uh, time you that are like priceless when you play with these teammates. So yeah, I wanted to ask you since you also analyze the game, like how would you say is the importance of uh, sustaining or like yeah being together as a team? Like because kanwari lang sa like sa Lasal, there was a time na hindi sila nag final four sa UAAP because they kept changing your coaches. Like walang continuity. So yung players like when I talk to them also here in the podcast, nirapan sila to adjust. To a system in less than a year, just you need to play in the UAP with like coach tab na alam na alam na ng players yung system or maybe even in the pros like kumara yung Hinebra like they're so formidable now because nung na master na nilang triangle ni coach Tim pero nung bago din naman 
yung hindi pa sila sanay, parang hindi pa sila magaling nun. So, how would you say is the, how how vital is continuity in basketball? It's very, very important. Kasi, I know, you know, familiarity and closeness and, you know, the shared experiences that you have. You go through the heart, the most heartbreaking losses. You go through the highest of um, of the best victories. You, you conquer milestones together. I mean, you bring that together. Hindi na mawawala yun sa, ano eh, sa, um, sa samahan nyo eh. And mm-hmm. for us, um, I guess, yun nga, ang dami na namin pinagdaanan na, ano, na we're always, you know, dihado yung team namin. And, you know, marami sa amin nang galing sa mga teams na hindi naman talaga successful. But we've found a way to complement each other's weaknesses. Um, naturuan ko yung mga iba na sa mga experience ko with, in a, with sa Ateneo and sa TNT, sa Alaska. All those things na, you know, every day may, may tinatanim ka sa mga teammates mo. Hindi mo naman alam kung kailan magbubunga. But you trust that one day they, they will get it. They will understand it. And and it shows in, in in the way they play. Yeah, that's really great. And I hope Alex sustains it now. Like Kiefer, he hasn't signed yet a, a contract or an agreement yet as of today. But yeah, hopefully he gets to play. And guys have Kevin and us. They have you coming back. And yeah, you have the bigs that you mentioned. Sila Mike Miranda, sila JR Kinyahan. So it's really a sight to look forward to for the PBA fans. But yeah, you also mentioned Coach Yang. And I know that he was your coach also in Red Bull. And now he's also your coach in NLEC. So, like, what's the secret of Coach Yang and uh, him being a very terrific coach in the PBA level? Na he's been a coach since the '90s, and you know, the system, the culture, niya, talagang it's still successful until now, 2022. I think more than his system is, you know, players like to play with him. Mm-hmm. I mean, beyond the the fiery tactician and the court. And you know the scary things that we see is really a caring friend and a, a father that takes care of you behind the scenes. I mean, a lot of us probably wouldn't deserve our, our contracts in the team. You know, you know, daming best namin natalo, but he would still stick his neck out to management for us, and that that's true. I mean, I am not biased with him uh, because matagal ko na siya naging coach. But really, players long to play for him because he would really give chances to players that players will not get in other teams. And you just can see the players that went through him who were not given chances in other teams. But um, look where they are now. Look at just Wami Tiongson, right? Top point guard in Terra ter- Firma. I mean, when he yeah. came to Coach Yang, it's a start pa lang. I mean, he couldn't. He, he couldn't take Coach Yang's style of, of tough love. But right now, he's, he's one of the, uh, uh, best, you know, yeah. the best point guards in the league. Na. And, you know, marami pang ganyan si, si Coach Yang. He, he just sees um, so much potential in, in, in players. I mean, a lot of players are labeled, ito lang kaya mo, andito ka lang, undersized ka, um, you know, hindi ka shooter. But pag binigyan ka ni Coach Yang na 15, 20, 25 minutes, somehow, you know, na-unlock mo yung mga, um, yung kaya mo pala. Na, you know, natututo ka maglaro. And you learn how to survive in the PBA. And some coaches are not as patient as him. Na chachagayin ka talaga yun. When he sees something in you, basta maganda yung ugali mo. And you try to be, to play smart. You know, he, he's gonna give you a chance to, to prove what you can. Yeah, that's really a great uh, thing that he does. Like, kahit 15th man, ka 12th man, 7th man, 4th man. Like, he gives you the confidence and the opportunity to actually show your wares in any game. Like, hindi mo alam na biglang zero minutes ka today, tapos sa Friday, uh, 25 minutes ka. So, kailangan ready ka talaga palagi. So, I'm curious, ever since uh, Coach Yang started in the PBA or ever since I started watching him, like, How does he make those players buy in? Like, for example, si Paul Lee, when he was in Rainer Shine, he won't get 35 minutes. Now in Magnolia, he does it. But then, nung Rainer Shine, like, yun sila Paul Lee, sila, um, sila Jeff Chan, and then now nung Red Bull mo, you guys had like sila Mick Pinisi, sila uh, Lordy Tugade, ikaw. Like, and daman yung mga star players and all of Coach Yang's teams. Pero he makes them buy in with the rotation na balanced. Eh. So, ano yung style niya with that? 
Um, siguro for him, kasi nga, uh, you know, he always says na he was, he didn't play much before when, when he was, um, you know, playing. And so he knows how it feels not to get playing time. And mm. he doesn't want his players to feel that way. And for him, I'm going to give you a chance. Bahala na sa gagawin nyo sa playing time nyo. Basta ako, I did my job. I gave you a chance. And, you know, as a player sa PBA, yun lang naman gusto mo eh. Playing time, that's your lifeblood. You just want a chance. And you're gonna get it with him. Uh, no matter what happens. As long as hindi ka tatama rin. And mm-hmm. what more can you ask for? I mean, if we're given that playing time, then it's just up to us how to make the most of our opportunities. And again, like I said, Coach Yang knows how to construct his teams in a way na players love to play for him and players love to sacrifice and play with each other. Coach Yang is not just gonna get uh, players na come here. Now you know the most talented, but fit is very important for him. And he yeah. emphasizes na hey, we have no groups here. Wala tayong ingitan dito. He mm-hmm. wants to emphasize also na kahit filam ka, um, kahit rookie ka, you blend with each other. Make an effort mm-hmm. to to know each other. Walang wala, walang grupo grupo. Like si Mick Pinisi when you mentioned it. My gosh, Mick Pinisi it was. Um, an Australian, uh, you know, but he knew how to uh, to blend with e- with everyone. I mean, he just had that personality of you know just enjoying the game and making others better. So, I mean, Coach Yang really knows how to construct a team that um, that has good chemistry. Yeah, that's a I don't know, really a valuable asset of his teams. Now you could argue that he's not the most talented team. Like all his teams are from Red Bull, Rainer Shine, and Lex. But you know. They'll give it all every game. Na kalag ni papasok niya dun yung talagang gusto manalo and talagang magpapakamatay para manalo. So yun nga yung part na yun na competitiveness and fire. You mentioned it kanina of his teams. Like as a as a fan or like as an analyst, then what? How would you say is the competitiveness of players now? Because like I listen to a podcast like called Bill Simmons. He says na yung ibang rookies na pumapasok sa Uh, NBA like sometimes makikita mo na lahat sila yung talent level nila mataas yung skill level nila mataas pero yung competitiveness nila every night na 82 games hindi mo makikita eh. so now yung mga bata ngayon like do you think naging mas cool lang rin yung competitiveness nila compared to the previous generations or is it that is that a uh, myth lang or like a wrong perception I think it's um you know kasi may nakikita tayong mga players ngayon na Parang tulad ni Ben Simmons, di ba, na, mm. you know, it's so glaring na you didn't even try to help your team. Tapos, you see a player like Jimmy Butler na it's yeah. in his DNA to really, really just fight through all adversity and, you know, bubuhatin talaga yung team. So, I think um, it's not really the generation of players. I mean, it's, what's, what's really inside a player? I mean... May, may mga players talaga na you know who really love the game and who really want want to fight and compete at a high level. There are also players who um, struggle and shrink when that moment comes. And unfortunately, that's just really the case um, in basketball. And you know, si Coach Yang, that's his emphasis also. Na you know, when he trains us, um, may t-shirt nga kami, tough love basketball na asura. And it's just you know a, a reminder na okay, like a soldier. Okay, an, an athlete. Kumbaga, you, you you sacrifice for your team. You, you you fight for 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 management. You play for for each other, and you know you your your goal should not be divided. Of course, there are many there are many things the na kailangan I mean, uh, business and uh, other careers. But then, pagdating sa court, dapat there's one unifying force for uh, for everyone to. To reach that goal and to play as hard as as you can, and you know, and talaga training ni Coach Yang for for his teams. Yeah, that's really great that he's able to impart it. Because ngayong ibang players you mentioned ng Ben Simmons, like I don't know, I'm not a fan of him also. And pati ako like yung players pag talagang tinatamad, they're like kulang yung motor niya or competitiveness. Parang na off ako like as a fan. Like there was a question na si the Andre Ayton yata like entering the draft. That was like, one of the ano weaknesses daw with him and well hindi naman naging problema until nung natalo sila sa Dallas nung game 7 like people started saying stuff about him pero yeah i think it's very important na talagang ganun yung mga players now and 
Yeah, you mentioned already, um, yeah, Mick Tanisi and like your Red Bull stint. Maybe we could also talk about like your basketball career, like where you started, since I like asking my guests those stories that they could share. So maybe you could share like your upbringing and your childhood. Like, did, where did you start playing basketball, or did you did you actually play basketball first, or did you try other sports or other activities like arts or theater? Like, how was your childhood like? <laughs> Oh, my dad used to play tennis, and I picked up a tennis ball in our backyard. Um, mm-hmm. Then sa sa bakod namin nagkabit ako ng uh, malit na court na may alambre and started shooting there. It uh, oh. nag-upgrade siya sa sa wooden court na maliit na na bakal naman, bakal pa rin. Tapos uh, yun malit na bola, shoot shoot, and um, on my own just trying to get the feel of it, and then. Um, I went to Milo Best, started oh, um, yeah. Yeah. train there, and then you know most of it was recess lunch sa 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 school, just playing with my classmates and and other sections, pero lang and then the usual um, varsity teams in in grade school, um, yeah I started there and I didn't try any other sports I wish I did I wish I played like soccer siguro or track and field to complement it. Oh, yeah. uh, but then I was just so um, I was just so focused on basketball and video games at that, that time. So um, you know, yun lang. And then I never stopped na just for fun. No plans to go to the UAP. I didn't know what the UAP was. I I I watched the PBA, but no plans whatsoever. I it wasn't a dream. I was just playing, playing, and playing, and just enjoyed it. Got better at it, and then. You know, I was in a coach Sandy. They taught me more uh, about it, and yeah, I, I didn't stop playing until till probably this year. <laughs> I stopped at the end of the year. Hindi naman babalik ka naman sa league, and I'm gonna get to watch you again on the PBA stage. But you, yeah, you mentioned nga that you started early and you played grade school palang na nagmamailo ko in sa Ateneo. But what could you say is the importance of uh, or the advantage of players like you who actually had you in Milo and then you had Ateneo grade school training until high school and then college. Like, what do you think is the advantage of players like that compared to players like, no matter, I can only think of the top of my head, sila Pascal Siakam or Joel Embiid. Like, they started playing basketball, I don't know, 16 na ba sila or 17. So, kung bata ka pa lang nag-start, like, ano ba yung mga advantages? Like, exposure, uh, may intangibles, you have more fundamentals, mas nagiging habit na, like, yeah, maybe you could share few stories well si June Marfahar just started late Ayun, I mean yeah. that's he started like I don't know 15, 16 and then yeah, yun si June Mar- look at him siguro there's no guarantee na if you start early uh, you're gonna end up successful it does help I mean if you're interested in it, you start early and you get exposed to all these competitions and teachers yeah I mean you get a head start but it also can develop bad habits I mean, if you keep playing, tapos hindi ka naturoan ng tama. I have so much bad habits now na I wish I got I corrected. Uh, so yun. Um, it's not so guarantee, I guess, that you start early. Um, there are players who start late. Enrico Villanueva started late, high school mm. na. Um, mm. you know, about thirty Ravenna started late, mm. high school na rin. He didn't. He couldn't catch a ball daw sabi ni Kiefer nung grade school, and he didn't know what he wanted to do. Yeah, and it just all all of a sudden clicked for him. No, no high school. So, I mean, uh, and no, no guarantees. Talaga, a lot of things can happen. Um, siguro for me, uh, just being active, just being connected to the game, and having the right teachers. Lang, I was blessed. Lang with ano, and the right teammates. Siguro, I mean, I could not have done it on my own. I mean, in grade school, sobrang daming mas magaling sa akin, mas athletic. But somehow, I just found a way to to stick with the game, keep playing, say no to destructive habits, say no to unnecessary social life. Also, that um, <laughs> kept me focused on playing. So I I enjoyed that kind of path, even though it was was really that popular and it was kind of lonely. Also, na uh, you had to say no to so many other things. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that uh, yung uh, team niyo na talagang close knit and you guys were together like sila Enrico ganun. I had Wesley Gonzalez then kasi like before pa like maybe 
uh, three months ago, mga ganun. I had him on the podcast also. And he talked talk a lot about you guys na talagang since grade school yata, high school yung iba, tas hanggang college kayo kayo na magkasama. So, what would you say are the major factors and why you decided to uh, stay in Ateneo? And there are other schools for sure that tried getting you. Like, yeah, what made your group special? And finally, you, you even won the finals MVP in 2002. Yeah, uh, I guess I was just living in Katipunan, so uh, just <laughs> location. I didn't want to move anymore. And hmm. contrary to what you th- said na other teams were schools were getting me, no? Uh, I guess they assumed that I wouldn't leave Ateneo na, so oh, okay. uh, no, no one really recruited me. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yun, uh, I've been in Ateneo since grade school, so I didn't really think about um, moving to other schools na rin, unlike I siguro I didn't exercise my options na rin. parang it was just Right there, like I said, I didn't plan. I didn't plan a lot of things. <laughs> Somehow they just worked out. But uh, yeah, yeah. see, see, Wesley, see, Enrico. It helped then. Uh, um, they they came from the grade school, I guess. Um, pag pag yung mga asama mo came from homegrown. It just parang creates a kind of a loyalty that you share on the court. Na uy. Parang dala natin yung school colors since bata pa tayo. Even though, actually, no high school na kami, ano, nung college na kami naging uh, close ni New West and Enrico. Hindi man nung grade school naman, wala naman kaming ano, eh, masyadong connection nun. But we knew that, uh, we we knew each other na, hey, um, eto magaling mag-basketball to and may potential to. And yun, yeah. you know, when you look back at it, oh, nagsama-sama tayo rito. And after after all these years na pag-champion natin yung Ateneo. And yun nga, our lives were never the same after that. And to this day, um, you know, we were really, really good friends. So, yeah, that's that's probably more special than the championship that uh, we won. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's really great. Like, you know, I mean, even if I'm from Lasal, like, you know, I saw from Ateneo, like, even when they match nila Matt Nieto, like, even sila Antonio Sisi, may kwento, like, sila Aaron Black, like, ang saya nila kasi they've been together for so long. Ang ngayon nagiging close friends sila. So it's not really an uh, advantage or an edge lang din on the court. Like you gain people that will be with you for the rest of your life. Pero yun nga, you mentioned that these players like yung loyalty was really uh magnificent on time niyo. Pero now parang yung mga players they just move around like uh sila like come on, UP you cover them. Si Richie lang yata at si James Spencer and Noah Webb you hold overs. Like all these people came from different schools and then coach Gold um, made it work and they won the championship. And even in La Salle, there are people who come from Sobel or like Green Hills, but they don't end up playing for TAF. So how would you say is the change now? Like why, why would you say that players now have less of the loyalty? Or is there like more reasons lang that weren't present before on why players decide to play for other schools? I don't think it's a loyalty issue. I mean, players need to make decisions in life where... Um, where, where they think they can succeed and they have to plan for their futures also. And the, the reality is, if a player thinks that moving to another place will give him the best uh, option for, for the future and uh, more opportunities, then it shouldn't be taken against him. Yeah. I think um, it's nice now that there are so many options um, that players can go to, not just here in, in the Philippines because... Um, you know, um, the Filipino talent is is world class, and you can't just mm-hmm. keep them here um, in our country. And you know, being in a school, I mean, doesn't mean that you, you can't move to to another school. I mean, wala yeah. prate na nakatali ka just because you studied here in grade school, automatic na pupunta as high school or college. I think that's something that um, that people have to understand and. Uh, yeah, before players would just um, go to uh, to college easily where they came from high school, but yeah, that's just that's just life, and sometimes it's the smart thing to do as players as also. Yeah, but how about with the recruiting? Like now, it's some of them are saying it's becoming rampant. Like some coaches, like Coach Franz Pomarin. But then for you, are you in favor of what's going on with the recruiting now? Like specifically in basketball, na yeah, people say that they're. Deals, gano. Shepard's not proven. Until, I mean, you don't, we don't know. I mean, unless 
these people show it. But then like people saying uh, that the big schools, the ones who have funds and resources are the ones that get the big names. So are you more in favor of that? Or in time niya parang ibal daw eh. Like whenever I talk to players during your time in the UAP, it was a different way of recruitment. Baka hindi lang nila sinasabi sa iyo yung totoo, pero <laughs> <laughs> hindi lang nila masabi, no? But, <laughs> you know, um, wala naman kasing hard rules about it. And mm. ang hirap naman kasi talagang i-stop kung ano man ang nangyayari na ano yun, sa, sa recruitment na yan. And kung sa states na sobrang strict yung rules dyan, hindi nga nila mahuli-huli. Diba? Yeah. Or here, diba? That's just mm. the reality of it. Parang for players these days, um, you know, I'm just, I'm not saying I agree with it or yeah. saying it. That's just the reality. Especially, you know, you have a player from the province who... Um, who, who looks at basketball as their ticket to um, to, to, to help their, to themselves and their families. Mm. Parang they, they, they see basketball as, you know, parang a business or, or a career path that can really um, secure their future. And, you know, that, that's the reality. And, mm. I mean, it, it, it happens all around the world. Players, I mean, you play basketball, um, to, to, to earn for, for your family and, and to open up opportunities for yourself. I mean, if, if there were hard rules for it, there are concrete rules for it, maybe we could, you know, go into the discussion of, hey, this yeah. is not allowed, this is, um, this is illegal, and, you know, the recruiting should only be within these bounds. But the reality is there are no rules for it, so it continues. Yeah, I agree with that. And these uh these schools aren't doing like anything illegal. It's like it's there and they're just using their best because they have the support system in order to get these players. So yeah, that's what also my thought is. But yeah, moving on to your UAP stint. Like uh, when I was researching Kanina, since I wasn't even like born or like I was pretty young when you guys were uh in the UAP and you won the 2002 championship. So Maybe you could talk about like that that run when you guys in 2001 I read that you made the finals but you lost to LaSalle and then in 2002 nung rematch kayo kayo na nga yung nanalo so maybe you could discuss like what, what changed or like what swung the tide and why you guys ended up finally reaching the top in 2002 So wait I'm 40 right now and how old are you so when you talk about you were not born I mean I was I was I'm 22, eh. so yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So 18 years, pala. Okay, yeah. so I guess when I look, when we look back at our our you know our battles with Lasalle, the first two years that we we lost to them, I think we were not tactically prepared to 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 compete against Lasalle, and I guess maturity, then um, you know we had to. Be humiliated first before, you know, mm-hmm. we we could be ready um, to to compete. I guess for for me, you know, in two thousand three, in two thousand two, pala when um, you know, Coach Joel came, you know, a professional coach, and he just really changed the way we played and how we thought about things. Na about the game, na um, it was really he treated us like mature uh, players. Now he he got Wesley back to the oh, yeah. team and Anita Deo, two guys who were kicked out of the team before because of attitude problems. And um, mm-hmm. knowing Coach Joel, being a professional coach who kn- knew how to handle talent and um, players who had attitude problems. I mean, we all had attitude problems, man, including myself. Mm-hmm. And but mm-hmm. this guy, this coach, just knew how to, to 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 handle us and gave us like consequences for. Uh, for, for not following this, I mean, and for me personally, I like that. I like someone mm-hmm. who didn't treat me like a kid. So, um, probably I, I took advantage of that opportunity. I, I finally understood um, my role in a, in the team. What what um, I was guessing what my role was in my first two years, and siguro nung, mm-hmm. nung third year lang na, uh, all right, I've got a clear cut role, and I I can. I don't have to put too much pressure on myself and I can just be free in making Wesley and Rico LA rich better and I'd be comfortable with that. So, yun lang. I guess, um, tactically, um, Coach Joel just 
figured out a way how to play La Salle and just learn to enjoy the press instead of fearing it our first two years. Na sobrang intimidated kami when magta turn over kami sa press the, the the La Salle crowd would just go crazy ma three points si Ren Ren ma ashut si Mac Mac and siguro nung 2002 we just realized that hey it's it's not too bad it's not too bad let's calm down let's keep our poise we know what to do and you know win or lose we'll stick with our system yeah in that 2002 run were you like the scorer of the team like there was a game kasi na you were really the top scorer yata i think it was the finals been or final four so well, yeah, what was your role there in the team and how did you grow in it and succeed in it i wasn't really a scorer because si enrico yung first option And si Ed ay yung main point guard. Then si Rich yung isa pa naming option pang break ng press. Basically, I just played off them. I wouldn't have scored that much points without Enrico kicking out the ball for me, uh, to me. And that was really how I played. I just really relied on my teammates. I just really had trouble getting my shot off on my own. And that was really, that was really our system. So basically, I was ready to shoot the three. And also, just play good defense, make good decisions. Yun lang. And um, I found Coach Joel, a coach who could trust me with it, give me enough minutes to play. So, uh, you know, that, that really helped me. Yeah, you three-point attempts. Now you mentioned that, yeah, you're one of like my favorite players to watch also here in the here in the PBA in terms of like shooting and, you know, getting the form right and being consistent. So that time, na yun, like yung, si Coach Joel, nga, he'd give you the license to uh, jack it up from long distance. Because in time, na yun, I think in NBA or like even leagues, there were less people who would attempt a lot of threes. So for you, was it like that? Or was it also like you had the freedom to shoot just open? Ganun, or there were places to shoot? He gave us, he gave me the freedom to make smart decisions. I mean, I felt so much freedom with him because I, I didn't abuse the system. So, and I wasn't the player naman talaga who would be a volume player. But I was really very selective with my three-pointers pa rin, Even though you say na I could jack it up anytime. Yeah, I had that license. But I never, I never, you know, I never abused that license. And um, before, the pace and space trend wasn't, wala pa noon before Unlike now, na you know, teams really know how to space the floor efficiently and really get wide open threes. Before, it was still um, our offense was still clogging up the the, the paint uh, in the half court. So, parang I could have shot more threes probably if our spacing was better. And it was just really on the kickouts of Enrico. That I, I found my my openings and also saw a transition where we would um play, uh, or we would run our transition. That you know I finally found the freedom and you know no one was getting mad at me for for taking transition three. So um yeah yeah and th- th- with this generation I really like it that like you know the Warriors is the best example that they shoot a lot of threes and in a high transition. And a lot of their plays, yung mga split screen nila, yung mga off-ball screens, puro three points din yung objective. Tapos pag nakashoot na ng madaming threes, biglang may mga slip sa pick and roll or like magka-cut ganun. So ikaw, you, 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 you are, are, are you super in favor of the change now na yun, yung space, ka, spacing kakaiba. Tapos pag hindi ka masyadong magaling mag-outside shot, malamang sa malamang you might not get a lot of minutes. Like even the big men now in the PBA and the NBA and the UAP, Kailangan at least my decent long range shot or mid range shot. So do you think that's a great, uh, great path that the basketball is going on here in this generation? I think uh, copying Golden State and all all the space and space trend should be really taken into context. Um, You have a team has to know that their skill level and limitations first. Hindi basta basta pwedeng kopyahin mo yung Golden State system and titirahal ng three points and gagayahin mo lang kung kailan lagusa. I mean, those are two of the best shooters ever to play. Mm. And talagang even their big men refuse shots to get them open. So 
unless na may ganun tayong talent or skill, hindi natin pa basta, basta pwedeng gayahin, in my opinion, yung ganun klaseng style. And so, really, an offense, a team should still really be smart and say na, oh, ito lang kaya ng mga players. Sorry. Huwag natin pilitin na, you know, gayahin natin kasi ito yung uso. Diba? I mean, players can work their skill level up to, uh, to to improve and, you know, run something like um, how how Golden State is running it, but it has to be still. Kailangan realistic pa rin yan, uh, yung expectation and y- yung capability ng mga players. Yeah, that's really for sure. <laughs> Ibang mga players siguro gusto nila ganito mag shoot or ganito yung pace of play, pero hindi naman nila kaya ng matagalan. So, syempre kailangan it, yung system or yung gusto mong ma impart sa players, mo dapat fit din dun sa mga kinuwa mong tao nga. Pero for you, as like yan nga, as a player, you said you play off the ball a lot. And even sa Warriors, yung mga, hindi lahat ng players like D'Angelo Russell, he didn't fit well kasi he was a ball-dominant player. So for like an aspiring basketball player or even a current basketball player na nahihirapan uh, to find their role or naiinis sila na hindi sila nakakakuha ng bola, like what advice would you give them na they could still be successful or they could still be a star in their role even if yung usage rate nila or yung touches nila, it's not as high as they'd want? I think um, for players who want to carve out a significant role in a team, I think coaches really still really want players to keep it simple, to play within the system, to play unselfishly, and mm-hmm. not to you know, copy all these um, over-dribbling trends that we see on YouTube, sa TikTok, and all these players. I mean... There are players like Sina Kiefer, Sina Terrence Romeo, and si Siwami, and yeah. Jason Castro, that you really have to give them the freedom to, to dribble the clock out and, you know, if it take a shot, kahit silang humawak na bola, because they can yeah. win games for you. And sometimes yeah. that is the best option. Okay? Mm-hmm. But that, that doesn't work for, for all players. I mean, yung mga mm-hmm. star player na ganun, you have one of those in the team players need to understand that the reality is there can only be one, one star player in the team, or probably two, and then the rest have, have to be elite, um, high-level role players to finish and to complement the team. So basically, mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's what players should embrace. Na lang, na, you know, hey, may star talaga, and hindi ko naman pwedeng kunin sa kanya yung ano, I can get better, but I can make him better, I can make the team better by you know embracing my role and being a star in my role and um sino ba nagsabi sa akin if you feel that you are not getting the ball then every missed shot of your teammate is a pass to you you just need to go and get it yeah. so eh, diba alam pag shooter ka na ang role mo to space the floor obviously um you're at the mercy of your teammates getting you the ball and pag hindi mo nakukuha yung bola you just have to find a way to, to, to get it. I mean, go for an offensive rebound, you know, get, do the dirty work underneath. Yeah. Diba? So that's, that's just being a complete player and not just being a one-dimensional shooter. Yeah, that's something that uh, a lot of like, what, teenagers or young adults or even kids, that they must hear. Because like, even me, when I was playing in Southridge, I wasn't like the most talented player on our team. But then... Yeah, our coach would say like, oh, defend this one who's like, he scored like 15 points or or 20 points or mga offensive rebound kahit hindi naman ako ganun ka tangkad. Like, I just, you know, timing lang and positioning and yung mga important. And yung mga, yung kung lose ball, magda-dive ka, ganun. So there's still a way for you to gain minutes and find a role on the team. So yeah, people should realize that hindi kailangan yung top scorer palagi. But yeah, yeah, you moving on to like your, uh, yung unfortunate na nangyari sa yun, Ateneo, when you got injured like four games into the year. It may have also affected your uh like firing your stock on the draft in the PBA. So maybe you could share like the process of how you recovered there. Like maybe more of mentally since physically like everyone knows the masakit naman talaga yung ACL that you sustained at Ateneo. But maybe you could talk about like the mental struggle since you were on the top. That was I think I don't know kung the next year been or the following year na talaga na injure ka and it may have affected you since you're champion ka lang recently. Yeah, um, siguro uh, when you say that I came from the top and my struggle mentally, the struggle mentally was on how to handle that success. I mean, 
I was so proud that time after we won that championship and um I was destroying a lot of relationships around me and oh. in hindsight that injury was not unfortunate it's for me it's one of the best things that ever happened to me I mean oh. I was humbled with that injury and I realized so many things and you know I wasn't really working out too much and I thought that uh, you know magaling na ako I don't need to work out nakakasira ng shooting yan and you know it really humbled me when I got injured um, in a major way I was forced to um, to take care of my body to work out for the rest of my life ganun talaga pag may major injury you have to take care of the joint it's not that strong anymore uh-huh. so that was one of the most humbling experiences that I went to uh, uh, I went through so mentally how did i come back how did i um reach my point i don't know by god's grace i mean i started reading the bible uh, oh, yeah. that that year more than a year um in rehab i was with bj manalo the same thing oh, yeah. happened to bj also same injury and you know he shared some things to me uh, um with the bible also same situation uh, before he was so successful and he thought that he didn't need god but you know uh, the same thing happened to him na you know something happened something changed him and he shared his faith with me and you know um when i say the grace of god because i couldn't have done it on my own and um uh yeah more than a year of doing rehab where there was no clear um parang improvement on my knee and i just you know went through the draft and bahala na if makuha i wasn't really ready and it was just a, a leap of, of faith na um i didn't know really know what was, was going to happen and i'm just so glad that you know si coach yung kumuha sa akin because he gave me a chance to play siguro if i went to another team and i wasn't ready to play yet they probably wouldn't have been so patient with me and uh yun it's really God's grace, man. I mean, I cannot take credit for, for any of those things. So, you know, that's for another topic if you want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you mentioned that the uh, injury mo, but for you, it wasn't unfortunate. But even with that, like you said, na a change of heart or change of attitude with you because of that injury. Was that instant or it took time then for you, you know, to get convinced and reading the Bible and having that humble attitude was it instant or did it take current time for you to actually gravitate towards them <laughs> right now i'm still working on being humble i mean <laughs> i mean it's a lifetime of um you know uh, crucifying your pride i mean pride is such a mm-hmm. difficult uh, issue to deal with and no uh, i guess when it happened when i got injured um i remember bj manalo and you know paul tancha already shared and their faith with me and i i did it stuck to me, but I didn't take it too seriously then. I, I Like I said, I was too busy with, with basketball. And for me, why would I need God? I'm so successful. And, oh, um, you know, I didn't have time for this. And, you know, when, when I got injured in there in the court, the, the, the thought that came to me was, all right, God is telling me something. You better listen now because this is serious. And I don't know if I'm going to play again or... Or drive again. It was that painful. I mean, I, I was probably two or three weeks at home with an immobilizer in my knee. I just wanted to drive my car to just have some sense of freedom again and live a normal life. But uh, yeah, it, it 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 was just a humbling experience for me. Now I felt that you know God was communicating something through me, and it was probably connected to what BJ and Paul shared with me and it's a lifelong process right now I'm still trying to, to, to study and understand many things about it but um, I'm really glad that it happened to me mm-hmm. so yeah just going through that and you were able to uh, it was able to help you and benefit you that you had a belief in God now and had faith so how did it also help you uh, like jump start your career again and being with Red Bull and getting drafted like people were saying Thinking about can like drop all the way to 14th, yeah, ta yung pick mo like you weren't in the first round, pa. So how yeah, how did that also help you in your PBA career and possibly also also through the adversities you encountered? Shampoo PBA na yon like dami na rin na pagdadaan and then you're an adult so more more responsibility. So maybe yeah, maybe you could share 
how that instance also helped you with your future endeavors? The plan was to get to to be at number five. I see Coach Joel, he brought me to Boss MVP um, to try to convince them to to get me at number five. But they obviously they changed their mind. They didn't want to take that risk. I think they got Mac Mac at number five and I slipped oh, okay. at number 14. But okay na okay, kasi less pressure. I wasn't really prepared to play yet and I didn't know how my knee would respond. And so I think Red Bull was the best um, team I I would have gone to. Kasi wala naman pressure sa akin. It was, uh, I, they, they gave me time to recover. They didn't expect much from me. Parang it was a low risk um, pick. So, I'm just happy na... I was fortunate that Enrico was in Red Bull also. I mean, yeah. it was a continuation of Ateneo. The guy really mm-hmm. took care of me. Paolo Bugia was there also. Mm-hmm. And we had a bunch of great leaders in Red Bull. Topex Robinson, Junti Valenzuela, Mick, uh, yeah. Lordy, Cyrus. I mean, tatlo lang yata kaming rookie ron eh. Ako, si Paolo Bugia, si Leo Nahorda. So, we were coming into a, a team of grizzled veterans and... Um, you know, leaders who, who knew how to win and who would really fight. And so, again, I went to a situation where, oh, I, I could just be myself and make others better. I mean, PBA na to, I'm used to not being a star player. I'm used to um, being, you know, uh, a second fiddle, third fiddle, but, uh, but I loved it. I loved making other players better. I didn't care if I didn't get the stats or shots. I just wanted to fit in into a team and uh, naturally, I, I really want to pass the ball more than shoot kasi talaga eh. So, um, that's just really my personality. So, um, I guess it helped then, kasi my teammates didn't think of me as a threat to them. So, uh, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I'm here. I want to play with you guys. I hope you want to play with me also. Yeah, that you guys were a really united team and it showed that you guys were, were winning a lot and actually, on time na yun, that was the time I was starting to watch PBA play. And Red Bull really impressed me with like yeah, the team that you guys had. And from like the starters into the bench, you guys were very strong. But with you, uh, for you, like, do you think that yung style of play yung, yung Red Bull na talaga, uh, you guys were very physical and you guys, yeah, you see James Yapayatim is a mga major na halaban yun. And, like, do you think that style of play would yeah, still fit with this kind of play here in the PBA? Like, if you guys would play that way, do you think kaya pa ba yun mag-succeed or mag-flourish a PBA? As long as the rules would allow it, I wouldn't say mm-hmm. na super physical kami. I wasn't physical. But we played tough. We played smart. And we had mm-hmm. some enforcers na siguro the other teams would think twice um, to, 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 to mess around with. So we had that parang toughness that other teams that, that bothered other teams probably uh, du- during our time. So that was an advantage for us. And yun nga, like I said kanina, our team was composed of great leaders, great veterans who, who knew how to lead the team. And kami, as rookies, we, we just followed. And again, si Coach Yang just really built a tough team. His personality... You know, he instilled confidence in us and he made sure that we, we played hard each and every game, uh, win or lose. Yeah, and with the with the Red Bull team and also with your other stints like Alaska and TNT, like, you talaga nagcha champion talaga kayo and you value winning and not just the individual accolades and all those things. So, ikaw, like, nung, how did you develop that mindset naman, or that attitude that you'd always want to be in a winning culture and be in a winning environment? That prioritizes championships. Because, like, yeah, you mentioned Rena, and even some players would want the points, like the razzle dazzle, the dribble moves, the YouTube, the TikTok videos. But like, oh, you made it a point to, you know, prioritize winning and grab all these championships that are very instrumental to your career. I think it's humility, lang, um, Diego. I mean, I worry, I worry, because drama and arti pag naglalaro. I just really want to win. I just yeah. want to have a. Uh, I just want to enjoy the game and you know connect with my teammates, have fun playing with them, serve them, help them. But uh, the essence, just you know, making a team work. 
na you know taking the limelight uh, out of yourself parang i was never really comfortable with the attention on me anyway so you know when it, where, wherever i was put i i, I had to realize Gosh, ang daming star player dito. Magkakagulo lang yung team kapag nakigulo pa ako. I go yeah. to Alaska, star player Willie Miller, LA, and mm. Joe Devance. Yeah. I'm just gonna compliment this guy, Jeff Carriaso. I go yeah. to TNT, Jimmy, Jason, Ranidel, Kelly. Mm. I mean, bakit ako manggugulo rito? This is a great group of guys who, you know, yung core nila... It doesn't need another another main man here. It just needs someone to to, to complete them. Parang a go through player, like what Coach Shot would call me, just a go through player. Na um, it, it's such a huge compliment. Na uh, for me, na you know, I'm happy being a role player and just playing at at a high level and making whatever it takes for the team to work. Ganun lang talaga ako. I, I, you, that was a great uh, attitude for you. Na, you know, you grabbed that role player role, and you still you were successful in it. Nakita naman that you get the minutes and you get the uh, you get the touches, but then to space the floor and yan yun nga nakita ko rin na you wanted to be a playmaker for these squads. But then yung shooting nga, which is the number one asset that you bring to all these teams. I wanted to ask you like what was your when was the time that you really knew that you were a shooter that you could compete with the best here in the country like nung high school ka pa bar, grade school shooter ka na ba nun? <laughs> no i really didn't want to look at how i shot when i was in grade school and high school because i'm pangit ng form <laughs> mm-hmm. no so actually no third year yan in ice ni coach sandy yung shot ko and you know when, when kay coach joel sa 2002 when i was able to perform consistently na and I saw the difference in the mechanics and yun nga, the numbers also na yung percentage mataas. Um, yun, realized ko na, okay, um, th- this is, I think I figured out a way on how to, to, to shoot properly. And yun nga, I was blessed in with teammates in, 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 in the pros who really wanted to to look for me also and who trusted in my uh, skills. Uh, so, yun, it really helped me. Yeah, the, sige nga, you started, uh, you didn't start on the correct foot anong time na yun, pero you developed and grew as a shooter. You even reached like one of the best shooters nga in the country. So, yung mga routine mo ba? Ano yung mga ginagawa mong routine when you were practicing your shot? Like, is it mga catch and shoot, a uh, one dribble, pull up, yung mga... Um, um, what do you call this? Yung mga two dribbles or yung mga off the pin down, off the ball screen. Like, what's your style in practicing these shots? Well, since I'm more of a spot up shooter that spaces the floor, I try to do drills um, that incorporate different footworks one, two steps, hops, uh, one legged shots, and um, transition threes, all those types of uh, shots na. Um, you know that it's it's a game situation, and you know what helped me also probably my son Liam. He's a he's mm-hmm. a set shooter and he loves Steph Curry, and mm-hmm. when I see him shoot also, parang realize ko, hey, his shot is effective. Mm-hmm. He doesn't jump much, and he uses his arms a lot. He uses parang yeah. hindi siya nagle legs masada. I tried it, um, one time. Na you know the shot na hindi hindi jump shot hindi two two uh-huh. motion shot uh-huh. so ganun si Steph di ba na ang bilis uh-huh. ng release at rhythm so I tried it then and it's really effective so mm-hmm. I I did some drills also to remove the hitch from my shot yung um, I don't know kung nakita mo yung master class ni Steph Curry sa um di ba meron siyang master class shooting he mm-hmm. he does all those basic drills na warm ups na sa shooting niya it's really really mm-hmm. effective. And yun nga, it's it's good to incorporate um sa sa shooting style ko, especially now na 40 ka na and ang hirap ng you know your legs are are leaving you na, so you learn to shoot also na um with, with minimal jumps and um probably more follow through and higher arc. So those things you work on as you grow older. <laughs> Yeah, but it's really great na like you know mga shooter na ganyan, like sila Ray Allen, kahit nung people would say na 
uh, they were on the twilight of their career. They still won a championship. Siya pa yung nagpatay ng game ng game six ng finals or even sila Jason Kidd. Like, di ba nung bago si Jason Kidd, di naman siya tumitira ng three points. Eh. Pero when he was uh, when he was in the Mavericks nung nag-champion sila, naging three-point shooter din siya. So, kaya yung mga players na ganyan, like sila Clay, I think he's gonna play till past 40 kasi kahit ngayon na torn Achilles na siya and ACL, di ba? He's still a threat. Like, people won't say na He's a liability on the floor. So yung mga shooters talaga, I think they have a, they have a own their own role talaga in the league that's long term. Pero yun nga since I mentioned that na shooters and I'm pretty sure that you know since you watch the NBA that the franchises and the organizations value these, these shooters a lot. Like the Heat, they paid Duncan Robinson a ton of money. The Brooklyn Nets paid Joe Harris. Washington paid Davis Bertans. I mean now he's in Mavericks na. Why do you think these teams are willing to pay, maybe even overpay these shooters in this era of basketball? Because the three-point shot is a game changer and shooters can warp defenses. I mean, they're really players who the defense really needs to uh, pay attention to. I mean, the best shooter ever, Steph Curry, binabantayan ng dalawang tao sa half court. Yeah. I mean, if you have that kind of gravity and attention, what kind of defense, uh, what kind of damage can you do to um, to an opponent's defense because of your presence and because of that mm-hmm. skill, diba? So, you know, shooters maximize the space on the floor. And it, um, it brings out, it, it, it destroys shot blockers, rim protectors, yeah. Rudy Gobert, mm-hmm. Roy Hibbert. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Miles even Yo- yeah, even yeah. even Jokic, no, uh, even mm. though he performed so well against uh, Golden State, isang high ball screen lang with Steph Curry na involved si Jokic. Hirap na hirap na sila. So yeah, I mean the game has really changed from before. Na I remember my saying pa jan na ano eh, na as close you, the percentages of of shots increase as long as um you 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 go closer to the basket, which is true. I mean, yeah. the closer you are to the basket, um, mataas yung percentage. But then, it's also a high percentage when, you know, a corner three na walang bantay. That's really one of the deadliest shots in the game that can uh, mm-hmm. beat a team. And um, yun nga, no? It's, the three-pointer has become a very, quote-unquote, easy shot these days. Mm-hmm. Probably more important than... Um, the, the mid-range, although it's still very important, especially in the players. But yeah, it's just the trend these days na the three-pointer is such an amazing shot that can, you know, change the game. And who knows, diba? They're thinking of putting a four-point shot pa because of yeah. what Steph Curry is doing, diba? How, mm-hmm. how fun would that be? And ano na mangyayari dun sa mga rim protectors pag may four-point uh, shot, diba? Mahirapan sila pag yun lang yung role nila. <laughs> they need to be more versatile and be yeah. able to play outside. Yeah. Uh, yeah, very that's really a great thing to hear from you. Pero nga some of these teams like may mga shooters talaga na worth it. Makikita mo naman na pag binayaran sila ng malaki, buti lang na lock up mo na sila bago sila naging high demand in the market. Pero yun, some of the people I mentioned di nga naglalaro like Duncan Robinson did get to play. Or even here locally there are some din na talagang yung magagaling like sila Jeff Chan, ikaw si Gary David, yung mga ganung kind of players like yung time niyo talaga pag binigyan kayo ng open shot, sure ball kayo. Pero why do you think some of these teams, like, yun nga, rush to get these shooters? Is it, is it because it's scarce or, like, it's rare to find? And sometimes, yun nga, they overpay. Or do you think is there's a proper way to actually gauge na talagang, ah, kaya nito maging consistent shooter, hindi lang siya hot streak for one season or one year? You, you know, I think it, there's there's really no guarantee to it. I mean, it takes time to to see whether a player can be really consistent and a reliable three point shooter. Um, I guess, I guess when you look at Duncan Robinson, then before, siguro worth it yung 90 million contract niya. But parang now na hindi nga siya nagamit ng Miami Heat, parang there are questions as to his contract because you know hindi nga siya magamit sa series because aatakihin lang siya ng, ng defenders. No? Pag mga ganong series na um, grabe yung pisikalan and you know, parang headhunting like Boston would really headhunt you. Kawawa rin talaga yung mga shooters. So, you know, teams have 
Uh, it's also a risk to overpay shooters, especially kung shooter lang. Kailangan yeah, these right. days, di ba, na... Um, like, look at Boston din. I mean, look at their shooters. They can all def- defend. And w- mm-hmm. really, wala talagang weak link sa, sa defense. Kaya they're the number one defensive team in the league. Now, siguro, if you're a, if you're a shooter like, like Clay... Pero ang galing din dumipensa ni Clay. So that's that's a different story. So I guess just a shooter will not cut it out anymore these days. Especially if you are easily headhunted on defense. So it also takes uh, wisdom and discernment um, to, to just you know get a shooter just for his skill. There has to be other skills also that um, you know complement the, the shooter. Yeah, that's really a great point that you raised. That people need to be more, uh, more, more than one-dimensional players now, especially in this generation. Because I mean, you you played in three x three, then like kung hindi ka versatile dun, and you can contribute in various facets. Medyo mahihirapan ka talaga to flourish at that level. But then yeah, before we go, I wanted to ask you about an analyst. Because I mean, I've watched the finals live. So I really didn't hear you behind the mic in the finals, the UAP. But then I heard you in the other games, the elimination round. And yun nga, you were very articulate and eloquent, even if, if even if it was your first time covering the UAP. So maybe you could share how this passion of yours started. Like, what was the journey like in being an analyst? Was it like your dream before? Pa? Was it <laughs> coincidental? Along? What was it like? I think it was coincidental. I mean, Boom Gonzalez interviewed me for the UAP School Spirit. And oh, there was yeah. probably just a portion there where I just shared a really funny story about Coach Sandin and Rico. And okay. Miko Halili calls me and he says, uh, you know, I was really amused by your story. And would you like to try to, you know, to, to be an analyst or to like be a storyteller in the UAP? I think you'll do well. And so he trained me for uh, and these other uh, guys for, for probably a month or two via Zoom. Nag- practice lang kami ng mga anal- ng uh, covering games and yun uh, through throughout the season him and Boom Gonzalez were guiding me on what to say what not to say and probably the most important thing that Miko told me was you know this is the day that you stop becoming a fan you are just going to call the games as you see it there are no biases you're not even allowed to to stand up when the school song is um, being uh, played, and yeah, you know, for me, um, yeah, I, I took those things to in mind, and then Coach Yang reminded me, be diplomatic about everything you say, and again, it was a reminder also that you are here in a team, you're here to help your anchor, he's there to help you. So, parang for me, again, I put it in a situation in a team where. How could I make other uh, my teammates better? How can I make Boom, Miko, Nico Ramos be better? So that was mm-hmm. just my mindset on it. And how can I make um, the players and the coaches look better? What kind of words can I say that will build them up to highlight their mm-hmm. talent? And you know, um, it for, for me before every game, siguro I'll share with you. I, I have to pray also. And ask mm-hmm. you know the Lord to help me to have self control in what I say. It is so easy to slip up and say unnecessary things on there, and that would just really get me in trouble and other people. It's so unnecessary. So there, I have to be conscious of that also. Na you know, it's also being uh, humble also. Not as an analyst, just because I'm an analyst, I don't know everything. Okay, analysts are always wrong. And that's mm-hmm. that's just the guarantee. That's the fact. We are wrong all the. T- uh, most of the time. So, you know, my words are not really that important. I mean, my opinions can be wrong. But I, I just need to be humble enough to, to to say those things, to build up other people and to make the, the team in the panel and those around uh, around me uh, work better. Was it hard for you in the finals na walang ang biases? Because it's like you to cheer ng Ateneo. Like when you're talking, like was it difficult at first? Or was it Kinaya mo naman from the onset. To be honest, you know, I'm not really a diehard fan, Diego Ateneo. Oh, okay. I appreciate, I, I love Coach Sandy. Uh, I love the people who I have relationships there. And um, I appreciate uh, 
my my whole Ateneo life. But I'm not really a diehard fan. I appreciate um, great systems, great players. I love looking at the game analytically and studying the game. Kahit anong team pa yan. And that's probably what makes it easier for me to call games. Na, I, it's easy probably for me not to get biased. Probably my only difficulty, um, and I really have to stop myself, is, you know, pag nafo-focus si Coach Sandy sa, sa camera, I, I, I want to make fun of him. Oh, yeah. I really want to throw a, a joke at him, and I have to stop myself from that. See, that's, yeah. that's just the... <laughs> That's the difficulty I have when covering Ateneo games. But, you know, being biased and everything, no, I don't think that's a problem. And, you know, Miko, Miko Lili told me that. Na, that's why I'm getting you for this, for the Ateneo UP game. Because I know that you don't care uh, about who wins. I mean, y- you're not biased. And even in the La Sala Ateneo game, parang nagulat na ako na, okay, uh, mo ako dito. Okay, don't be too conscious about, you know, um, saying good things about La Sal too much or um, babawasan mo sa Ateneo, just be natural, be yourself. And yeah, I guess it was uh, easy for me to do that. Yeah, you mentioned nga about being natural and not being biased. Was it, pumupudok ba yung social media more yung mentions mo? Like, was there ever a point that people would say na biased ka naman or ganyan? I think I, there was probably one or two um, comments na uh, they said na I was biased. But then, I really wasn't too active in social media back then, but with my Twitter, um, and I wasn't really posting din sa, um, sa, on my IG about you know about the game, and you know, ganon lang trabaho lang basically trabaho lang. I was just enjoying the job, and I didn't try to add anything more to it. Yeah, how about with the play, uh, the style of play, like all throughout the season, like what caught your eye, like sure, pang fan and. Covering the game, man, jumag ka iba na yun. I mean, like me, based from the interviews I've heard of people that cover games, whether locally or internationally. So, ikaw, like being there, being there for more than the whole game, like my pre game and post game, pa, like, what impressed you talaga with these teams and with these players? Maybe yung mga sets nga nila, since you like the analyst, you're the analyst, or yung mga way of, way of uh, play of this, these people. Like, Ateneo is fun to watch, even if I'm not, <laughs> I'm not for Ateneo, I'm from La Salle, but. The way Coach Tab has the sets, like it's beautiful. And even Coach Gold, like towards the latter part of the year when he got the trust and the confidence of his players. It's really beautiful how you see the the teams from day one till the end. Uh learn how to 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 match each other and beat each other. And you know for for me, I and siguro the players lang in general, they play like pros already. I mean, they can beat pro teams. The, the talent, the skill of these players, really, really impressive. So that's a part of me that I can't help also, I, that I become a fan. I'm really impressed by, siguro yan, si, si Mike Phillips. My goodness, kung I, 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 didn't, I couldn't stop saying now, wow, I wish he I had a teammate like this who would just get the rebound and just kick out the ball for me. At titiran lang ako and... Siguro sa, sa UP, sa Carl Tamayo na second coming of Rani Del de Ocampo na yeah. alam mo yun, the best power forward I've played with. And obviously sa Ateneo, the, the, the way they, you know, they are just trying to be ahead of, of everyone with the discipline of their, of their system. And probably impressed also by how UP figured out a way on how to expose um, Ateneo and just really found a way to um, to be there. Pinag-uusapan namin yun off, off, off the air. Eh. May mga pinag-uusapan kami off air na hindi pwede namin pwede sabihin on air na um, it's really impressive how, you know, si the coach Goldwyn um, made all these calls na hindi namin ina-expect. CJ Cancino would come out of nowhere and just play and not think and just shoot. I mean, eh, eh, grabe lang. For, for me, as a first-timer to cover that epic Game 3 I mean, <laughs> ang hirap. Minsan, yeah. hindi ko na alam kung ano sasabihin. I'm just lost for words. But yeah, what an experience that was. Yeah, I saw you nga eh, Kasi like I have the media pass also. And then I think after game 2 yun or game 3, you'd go there. Just, talaga nakikipagkwentuhan ka. I heard you with the... I think yung other correspondents or the other writers din. Uh, talagang you were really impressed with how the games went. Like both game 2 and game 3. But then, yeah, do you have like... 
you have like plans of continuing this even if you're still playing for NLEX? Like even when you retire from the PBA, do you still want to like cover games for the future? As long as Miko and Boom say that I can do it, then why not? I mean, it's it's a uh, it's it's a fun it's a fun job. I mean, I learn so much. These are great people who who I work with. Sila Direk Al, sila Mam Malu, and the correspondents. Uh, sila Ompong, the the stats guy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, wow. The 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 stuff that I learn from a different perspective makes you appreciate the game. Um, in another way. Um, so in a very unique way. So yeah, as long as they think that I can do it, and you know they, um, they think I'm, I can help them with their jobs. And why not? As long as it fits the schedule, lang. So yeah, it's a fun job. <laughs> yeah. So before we wrap up, I usually ask my uh, guests these standard these standard questions. So yeah, one of it is, alam mo naman sa NBA bubble, do naging vocal yung mga players in terms of social and political issues and here like before the athletes weren't as vocal yet like expect, ex- uh, except ngayon nung nagkaroon na ng elections for 2022 so before there were issues na one journalist told LeBron and KD to like shut up and dribble na lang so for you as an athlete and you know as an analyst then like as a sports personality in general would it be uh, okay with you or do you uh, tell people na parang it's okay to mix being an athlete and being an uh, act- activist like for social and political issues and you know using their your platform as a way to amplify their voice and raise awareness for your fans or your followers so what's your thoughts on that as a human being i think we all have a responsibility to be um you know good citizens of, of our country and i think it takes a lot of wisdom and discernment on what to say and what not to say on these issues i mean With Twitter and social media so accessible, it's so easy for people to just say what they want to say at the height of their emotions and end up, you know, saying the the wrong things and you know, uh, destroying um, bridges and destroying relationships. I think it's really, um, you know, as people, we really need to be responsible with what to say and what not to say these things. I think we need to really know the stories behind these first and. You know, count the cost on on the weight of, of of our words. I mean, there's a time to say to to speak out. There's a time not to speak out. And I think it's um it's really important for all of us to learn um the timing of those things. But in general, I I don't think it's it's right for me to to be to be an activist that causes um. Uh, chaos or like attacking yeah. the, the government or attacking these people. Yeah. I believe in the power of prayer first before anything else. First of all, it's really God who puts all these authorities um, in place and he's the one who can take all these people out of place. And so surrendering that um, that thing um, gives us peace you know, no matter what happens. But at the end, but we also have a responsibility um, you know, to To, to to you know to speak out and do our duties as as citizens of this country. So there. <laughs> yeah, I would absolutely agree with your point there. But then for the next question, Oman, it's a fun question lang. If you had the opportunity to have dinner with five people, dead or alive, who would you invite? Oh wow! I wish you gave me time to uh <laughs> to to think of my answers uh for this um five That's people. Yeah, that's a challenge. Biglaan lang. Okay, five people, dead or alive, that I'd wish I... All right, there's a guy named R.C. Sproul, the, one of, the, my, one of uh, the pastors that I, I learned from. Uh, another oh. pastor, Alistair Begg. Um, three more. Um, hmm. Oh, you put me in the spot here. Yeah. Uh? Uh, <laughs> Uh, siguro, yeah, probably Kobe. <laughs> I don't know. Mm, yeah. Kobe. Um, the uh, I like Scotty Pippen. Scotty. Oh yeah. I I like him more than Michael Jordan. And one more. Um, siguro, the the grand my my grandfather who just passed away five years ago. I I wish I really spent more time with him. So. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's a very terrific list, also. But then for the final question, no man. Uh, since you and I invite invite all my guests, like halos lahat talaga. Mine message ko lang, mine email ko lang, and yung iba lang konti lang yung like through friend, through a friend or a family member. So who would you suggest to invite here on the podcast to you know share their story or also just talk about sports, whether basketball or anything? Like who do you think would be a great guest for me to have here on the DVD show? Hmm. Try to get BJ Manalo and Coach Sandy and Respeco Chaga. Oh yeah, I haven't interviewed both of them yet. So yeah, for sure, for sure. And I, I listened to BJ when Mikey Reyes interviewed him. Maganda nga, and especially he's from La Salpa. So talagang, it's a great interview. I'm not sure if you were able to watch that. So yeah, that's a great, a great guest that I could have lined up for me here in my podcast. So yeah, thank yeah. you again, Larry, for joining me here in my podcast. I learned a lot from you, and in guy, it's my first time to you know have you be here, and you were able to share your story from your career and also being an analyst. So I learned a lot, and thank you so much. Do you have any final message? Um, Siguro, I, I just thank you, man, for for um for doing this and. I hope you have more success with your show. This is a great thing that you're doing. That you're, you know, being interested in other people. Um, you're connecting to them, and um, you know, you sharing their stories, drawing them out uh, from people. So um, yeah, keep it up, man. And um, hopefully, you know, the, the guests that you plan to invite would really um, would join your show and but but thank you thank you for it, it's a blessing for me to 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 share my story also i hope it helped you and that it hope it for also sure. inspires and helps other listeners who uh who tune into your podcast yeah so before you go is it okay if we take a picture sure and okay i'll i'll take it from here wait long one two three Okay, thank you so much again, Larry, and thank you also for the kind words. And yeah, hopefully see you soon. Yeah, man. Okay. Hope to see you okay, soon too. Bye. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night.